Hi everyone, Steve Goodwin here with my Anchor Test video number 148. Now today's video is going to be a little bit abstract or perhaps we call it a nuance of anchoring and that is how do anchors fly or glide away from the vertical line during a deployment when the boat is not in motion and there's no current, everything is just in a static situation. Now, straight off, when I say gliding or flying, don't expect anchors to be like an airplane and gliding off at some shallow angle. We're talking about an angle that's something other than dead vertical, other than 90 degrees. And the idea during this deployment is if we can achieve some sort of flight, the anchor will avoid where the chain is going to pile up on the bottom. It's always a good idea to not have chain piled on anchors during deployment. Um, now the normal way to avoid this is just to simply have the boat be moving downwind or moving in the direction where you, the boat will, will ultimately be lying. And as you deploy the anchor slowly, uh, it will hit the bottom and then the boat continues to move and the chain can lay out in that fashion. But uh, there's certainly more than one way to do this and you, there may be a situation where you don't have a choice. Maybe it's an emergency you just have to let the anchor go very quickly. Um, or some people might be oblivious to all this and they may just let their anchors go. Um, still others might use this, be fully intending, yes, my anchor is going to hit the water fast, it's going to fly forward, and the chain's going to pile up behind it. This would be probably most applicable in waters where you can visually see what the anchor is doing and verify that it actually did stay away from the chain pile. Now, the speed at which the chain is being let out over the roller affects the anchors pretty severely, actually more than I had thought. And basically what happens is in the initial drop, almost all anchors will hit the, the water with an angle like this. Just happens to be the case for all anchors when they're hanging, they have this same sort of angle. Anyway, when it hits the water, it tends to go back like this and start this flying. Now, some anchors, if you keep the chain going fast, the chain will actually descend faster than the anchor. And once that happens, and there's enough of it, it will pull the end of the anchor down like so, and then it will fly the other direction. And that's, you wouldn't want that because it's gonna aim right back toward the pile. In fact, I even tested a situation where it flew not just back towards vertical, it flew beyond and went the other way. And assuming an unlimited depth, I could imagine that the anchor eventually would probably oscillate back and forth, maybe end up just in a straight down dive as well. But in any event, I've set up a controlled experiment down in our local boat haven. I have gone ahead and bolted a bow roller that came from a boat. I bolted it just to the dock. And this is an enclosed basin. There's no current in there. There's very little wind. It's a per perfect control test. I've selected five anchors and I'm going to use uh, some 5 16 chain, all chain road on all these tests. Uh, the anchors that I chose, I, I wanted them to be somewhat different from each other. There is a convex delta anchor, a roll bar rockna, a genuine Bruce, here's a spade and a Mantis M1. Another factor that I'll mention is that you can kind of cheat this. If you begin your drop with the anchor in the bow roller about in this position, and you let it go quickly, it's gonna already have some horizontal motion and inertia even before it hits the water. And that's not anchor flying. That's again, that's a, ge a geometric phenomena that would happen with a roller. Now you can use that to your advantage. If you want to get your anchor flying, great, do it. But again, I want to test just this hydrodynamic flying concept. So all of these tests, the anchors are gonna begin their descent from dead vertical. Now, another thing I'll mention is that some clutches on windlasses, or maybe you call it the brake, they are grabby, and you cannot modulate the rate at which the chain comes out well at all. Some of them are just like a switch, they're either on or they're off. And then other anchor systems, um, just the whole design, maybe you have a very, very deep anchor locker, maybe the chain drags along the deck a long distance, or perhaps where it comes through the deck in the spurling pipe, maybe there's a turn or a curve um, or some other means of making a lot of friction. In some of these cases, no matter what, no matter how free your clutch is, the anchor may not develop enough speed to create anchor flight. Uh, certainly, if you are the type of person that has a powered windlass and just uses the power down function, 
or backwards wind, uh, unwinding of the motor, uh, you'll never have an anchor fly because the anchor is going to just descend so slowly that there's not going to be enough lift to counteract gravity. So in that case, any kind of a slow deployment, you're going to just end up with vertical anchor drops. And last, before we get to the footage, I want to stress once again, if I have it already, I am not advocating for this or really any other anchor setting technique or really any anchoring technique. Uh, in fact, that brings up a point, and that is several people have asked me over the years, hey, how come you don't put out a how to anchor video? Frankly, it's just not my style or not my game. I'm more interested in the nuts and bolts of how these anchors behave. Uh, there's certainly been countless other people that have put out whole books on how to anchor a boat. And, uh, you know, there's really no right or wrong way. Certainly there's some things that you should avoid. You have to have a proper amount of scope. Um, we need to not wrap up the anchor. There's some basic fundamental things. Um, I'll let you guys uh, sort out or suss out those, those details from some other sources. Me, I'm just more interested in the physics and the technical stuff with these anchors. So let's go check this out and see, see which anchors will glide or fly the best. We'll start with the worst anchor and then we'll end up at the best. And they are not necessarily in this order. So of the five anchors that I tested, the Delta had the least ability to fly or glide off at an angle. On that particular deployment, it was a faster uh, deployment speed, and it resulted with no deflection whatsoever. It was dead vertical. Uh, there was one wrap of the string around the anchor, so it's possible that was a factor. Um, here on this next one, I went a little bit more moderate speed and ended up with an 86.4 degree angle from horizontal, which works out to be a 1.2 foot distance horizontally out in front there and I, I did several several checks like this and, and it was consistent I could repeat that number uh, several times next anchor is the spade and for this first deployment I'll show you here it was a really fast deployment just basically chain to run in between my hands as fast as it would go and it resulted in the anchor actually ending up underneath or going backwards uh, initially we could see Quite clearly that the anchor surged ahead, but I believe the, the chain caught up with the anchor, changed its attitude, and then it flew back underneath. Next deployment was at a more moderate speed and ended up with a an angle pointing out into the correct direction. It was an 86.1 degree reading on the angle finder, and that resulted in a 1.3 feet of distance away from dead vertical. This was an exact repeat of that. So there is this kind of not a magical speed, but a preferred deployment speed that will result in a, a an anchor that, that continues on a tra trajectory away from dead vertical. Next anchor is the roll bar Rockna. This first deployment was kind of a high to moderate chain speed and it resulted in a angle of 86.1 degrees from horizontal. Next deployment was a little bit slower chain speed and this time it flew out a little bit farther. The reading on the angle finder was 82 degrees and this works out to be a 2.7 feet of horizontal distance away from vertical. Here's another uh, similar speed and got the exact same result. It was 82 degrees on the angle finder. And again, uh, f looks like it flew out and stayed at 2.7 feet away from vertical. Next was the Mantis anchor. And with this kind of medium deployment speed, that was its sweet spot. It ended up with a 77 degrees on the angle finder. And if you do the math, uh, that worked out to be about a four and a half feet of horizontal uh, distance, distance from vertical. This next deployment was the same, uh, kind of again, I'm kind of a medium, medium speed, and it was another 77 degree reading on the angle finder. 77. 
And then the last deployment, I slowed things down quite a bit. Uh, still flew uh, quite well, better than all the rest, but it was uh, 81 degrees on the scope. But I went ahead and used that 77-degree uh, number for the 4.5 uh, feet of distance. And then now for the best anchor. This is the Bruce, and its name of the game is just to go as fast as you possibly can. Apparently, the anchor doesn't have a lot of uh, resistance, and it can dive just as fast as the chain, apparently, at least up to these depths. Uh, the first first one was uh, 71 degrees. Next one was 65 degrees. And then the last one, I just let it just let it rip as fast as it could possibly pay out. And it was uh, 60, 62.8 degrees on the scope. And that worked out to be 9.7 feet, or just under 10 feet of distance. Uh, with 19 feet of depth, so that's a really good flyer. That 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 anchor might be effectively flying even at really great depths. 62.8. Okay, that was a fairly wide range of performance between the excellent flying ability of the Bruce down to the very poor flying ability of the Delta. I'm thinking that the ballast chamber face here was causing a tremendous amount of drag. Also, this crossbar. Um, just overall, not a good hydrodynamic shape when this is trying to fly in reverse. The spade's not much better. It has open ballast chamber, which is like a scoop. That's very bad for drag. Rockno's pretty clean on the underside. The trailing edges of the fluke probably don't help, but I'm guessing that the roll bar is, is creating a lot of drag. That probably is what limited its flying ability. Uh, the Mantis otherwise would be probably excellent as well. We don't have trailing edge turned up, so this could probably um, make some pretty good lift. However, we've got this very large roll bar. Again, causes a lot of drag. I bet that slowed it down. Now the best anchor, the Bruce. We have no ballast chamber. We've got no roll bars and no turned up edges of flukes. We do have a square trailing edge but is now the leading edge of the shank that's probably high drag also a square shape here but this really really did well now a lot of people would assume that the the fluke surface area or wing area has a lot to do with the flying ability but in this case it's obviously not the factor because of all these anchors the smallest fluke area per weight is the bruce the one caveat though is that we do have wings that are high aspect ratio. And like gliders and seabirds, we know that high aspect ratio wings are very efficient, so that could be a factor. Tested. This is an ultra anchor, and I'm guessing that it would be a really good flyer. We have a trailing edge, or now leading edge, of the shank, which is quite narrow. The turned up fluke is sort of moderate, so that's probably not a big deterrent. But I think the big reason that this anchor might be an excellent flyer is the ballast chamber is beautifully sculpted. No hard edges, no scoops, probably very low drag. Now there is one other anchor that I'm going to show you today, and it's one that I have had in my possession for many years. Uh, one of my viewers sent this to me for testing years ago. What it is, is a fluke flying anchor, and it is designed specifically to produce very impressive glide angles on deployment. The purpose of it is not to avoid a chain pile. Rather, it is designed to produce all of its needed scope just through the act of this flying. Uh, the idea is the boat might be stuck on a sandbar and you could deploy it to pull yourself off, maybe pull yourself away from a dock. Uh, it does claim that it has a glide ratio of five to one scope. It has a fairly clever mechanism here with the shank. Uh, it's designed to be collapsed during deployment or when you toss in the anchor. And once it reaches the seafloor, you give it a tug. This mechanism opens up and now you have the anchor. I've got all the original paperwork. I've studied it all. I practiced. You'll see here in the footage I'm gonna show you that I gave it absolutely every possibility to function. And it's never been shown before. Here are the results. So as you can see, there is no chain here. It's just a rope only, and that's per the instructions. I had carefully coiled, or I should say flaked, the light rope right on the edge of the boat so it would create as little drag as possible. I practiced my technique, nose down, nose up, every possible orientation. Uh, the book was saying it would be about six tries before you get the hang of it. I must have tried it 60 times. Never could get more than about two to one scope. 
Uh, could get three to one in shallow water, but most of that was on account of the long throw. Uh, on that particular one, I measured out 40 feet of line, and it was about 20 feet of water. Again, practiced over and over. It was multiple days of testing. Here was just a throw overhand, and that was pretty good scope, but it was all just flying through the air. I tried different uh, different ropes, uh, went to a small polypropylene line. I would coil the line into the water first so it didn't have to drag it over the, the gunnel of the boat. Nothing worked. Really, only two, two to one flying in the water, three to one if we added a good toss. I did eventually give it a, uh, a holding power check with 10 to one scope, you know, set in a normal manner. Made about 300 pounds of pull. I'll also mention that any sort of weed would defeat the anchor. There was some just loose weed that most normal, uh, I should say, single tooth non-pivoting fluke anchors can penetrate. But this one, again, completely defeated by weed. Okay, that's all I've got concerning the flying anchor concept. Uh, tune in next month. Should be fairly interesting. What I've done is I've taken this standard roll bar rockna anchor and I have added some reinforced bondo to the leading edge and shaped it into a nice point. Now the idea is that this is going to improve performance in penetrating and holding power and I intend to test that improvement. First I will just conduct normal straight line holding power checks in a variety of seabeds and then I'll take a hammer and just knock this this leading edge off of there should pop right off because things don't stick to galvanizing all that well. And then on the same day, just repeat all those same tests, write down all the numbers, and we should come up with a good hard number as to just how much value there is in shaping a leading edge into a point. Now it is costly for manufacturers to produce this, and it is done occasionally. Uh, namely, the Rockna Vulcan anchor has a shank with a somewhat sharpened leading edge. Another would be the larger spade anchor models. They also have a triangular cross-section shank, i.e. a sharper leading edge. Um, I will mention that Rockna is uh, going to be releasing a new roll bar anchor. I go to their website, they call it the Mark II, and it does feature the same style of shank as their Vulcan. It's, a, it's more of the shape and profile as this anchor, but again, it's got that sharpened leading edge. So. Maybe next month we will have some good data as to how valuable that feature is. All right, thanks everyone for watching, and as always, anchor safely. So long.